Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we're about to make some awesome catfish slash cork bait. So stick around. There is tons of cork bait on the market. People use rice for bait, grits. They use breadcrumbs. Some people chop it up. Some people use taponko breadcrumbs. They use millet, oats, wheat bran. People use soybean, cracked corn. You name it. There's tons of different kinds of cork bait. Well, I carp fish for years and most people don't know it. And on today's video, I'm gonna show you a bait that I used and I've caught hundreds of fish with that works really, really good. And the best part is it lasts forever. Now, normally I do DIYs on this channel. If you like DIYs, you should go over and check out my channel page. I got a long list of DIYs that'll help you save money. And if you find something you like, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. Well, without further ado, let's get into making this carp bait. There's basically two types of carp bait. First, there's carp doughs, which a lot of people has recipes on how to cook it and make it and prepare it. In England, they make bullies out of it, which they usually put on their hook with a hair rig. And then the other type of bait is a break bait. With a break bait, you put it on your hook and you throw it out in the water and it falls apart like chum. Well, you have to have some kind of pickup. A lot of people use a fake piece of corn. Some people may use a real piece of corn. Where I'm from, we either use cereal or we use health food cereals, which are made out of corn and they're puffs. Well, we put those on a hook and they serve as our pickups. And I'm gonna go more into ways to use bait a little bit later. On today's video, I'm gonna show you a bait that I've made for 30 years. And it is a forever bait, which basically means it never goes bad. This bait does work really good and you can keep it all year long. You don't have to throw it away after you go fishing like you do if you use cream style corn. The main ingredients to this bait, this is hulled millet. You can't use regular millet, which is bird seed, but you have to use hulled millet. If you use regular millet with the hull on it, it's gonna float to the top of the water. Then I got some horse oats. I got some wheat bran that I got from the feed store. And we got some cheap corn flakes. You're gonna need a little bit of flour and you're gonna need some Cairo syrup. Or the off brand's fine, doesn't matter. You're also gonna need whatever kind of flavoring you like. I like banana nut. And this is the way I made this bait for a long time. Works really good. I've caught hundreds and hundreds of carp with this. But the cool part is you can catch catfish with it too. I actually caught the biggest flathead I ever caught by accident on this bait, which was 40 pounds. I don't suggest fishing for trophy catfish with this, but catfish and carp are both eaters of opportunity. If something's there and they like it, they're gonna eat it. You're gonna also need a clean bucket too. This is a two gallon bucket I got. Now this bait's easy to make as long as you got these four ingredients right here. All I'm gonna do is take each one of these ingredients and I'm gonna put one quarter of each one of them. And I can look at my bucket when it's a quarter full, stop, go to your next ingredient, fill it up a quarter and so on. And when you get to your cornflakes, don't use them like this. Make sure you crush them up good first. All right, now that I got all my ingredients in my bucket, I'm going to put about a cup and a half of flour in it and then I'm going to pour it over into a bigger bucket so I can mix it. Then this is what you should have. You should have your millet, wheat bran, corn flakes, and your oats all mixed together. Next we're going to add our syrup. If you use dry flavoring like Kool-Aid, Jello mix, or something like that, this will be the time to put it in and mix it into the bait before you put your syrup in. Since I'm using liquid, I'm gonna add it to my syrup. You don't wanna pour it in after you put your syrup in. I found the easiest way is to put it in your syrup and it doesn't dilute the bait as bad. Now that we got our flavor mixed into our syrup, it's time to put it in the bait and mix it up. All right, so the bait's done. All you gotta do is get your hand for bait. You take your two hooks, 
with your pickups or your pops on it. Two hooks work better because you have two pickups on the bottom and it holds your bait on the hook better. Because where I'm from, we don't use method leads. That's a British way of fishing and there's nothing wrong with it. But those method leads are like four or five dollars a piece and they're really not necessary. Put your hooks in it, wrap your bait around it and pack it with your hands tight. When you're done, this is what you have. You have a ball. And it's just this bait balled up tight. Now, if you want to see how strong it is, I mean, it's not coming off the hook. It's actually really hard. But when you cast it out in the water, it begins to break up pretty quick. You want it to take no more than five minutes to break up. The syrup mixed with the flour is a binder that makes it pack real hard. The wheat bran and the corn flakes and oats all make it break up. So when you make your bait, if it's not breaking up fast enough, you can add more wheat bran to fix it. And if your bait's not packing good enough, you can add more flour to fix it. Now I filled the aquarium up and I'm gonna drop it in here and I'm gonna show you what it does under the water. That's what it looks like when it breaks up under the water. You see the pops, you'll see why the leaders are short. The shorter your leaders are, the better. But that there acts as a chum to attract the fish and your pickups or your pops are floating above for the fish to suck up and get it hung in his mouth. You can also see the flavoring and the syrups all over the bottom because the tank was clean before I dropped it in there. So this stuff's spreading out everywhere to attract fish. Now this bait works really good. And really, I made this a couple of hours ago and it's already working good, but I like to make it about a week before I go fishing. And like I've said before, this works great for catfish and it works for carp. If you don't want catfish biting it, take some of your pops, whether it be cereal, whether it be these health food pops like these, I'll show you a picture of the bag so you'll know what kind we use. You take some of these puffs, you put them in a bag, or you can put them in a plastic bottle. And get you some cinnamon oil and put in it. Pour the cinnamon oil in it and shake it around and these puffs will soak it up. What happens is it makes these things as hot as those little red hot candies. And for some reason, small catfish don't like hot stuff. I mean, it's, it's been tried and it's tried and true, but carp will eat hot stuff. Sometimes if the carp ain't running, they're just biting. A little bit of cinnamon oil will make them start running. And make sure when you make your leaders to make them short. These leaders are pretty short and you can make them even shorter if you want, but use two leaders and it'll hold your bait on better. I got a video where I showed how you can make these little flags to go on your rod. And you take a paper clip and you make them. And I got a video where I'll show you how to make this stand right here. If you're using one of those court flags, you're going to get confused because it's going to keep making your flag go up every time a gust of wind catches your line. I like to put my rod stands in at an angle like this. And I like to make it where the tip of the rod is barely touching the water. Now the reason I do that is because if the wind blows, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to cause your bobber to shake. And the only way your bobber's gonna go up is if a fish is on it. But really, the only way you want to fish like this is if you got these stands with these cup holders. I mean, these things are awesome, and I do got two videos showing how to make these. And I'm telling you now, your rod and reel ain't coming out of one of these stands. Them rods right there, they ain't coming out of them stands. Tell you. And remember, the best part about this bait, it's called forever bait for a reason. It'll last a long, long time if you keep it in a decent temperature. I like to keep mine in a broom closet or something because it don't smell bad. But I've noticed if you keep it outside and it gets cold and it gets hot, sometimes it'll mold. That's about the only way you can lose this stuff. But if you keep it in a regulated temperature, it'll last forever. Well, there you have it. Best bait you're going to find on YouTube. You can take my word for it or not, but this bait right here is tried and true. And you don't 
have to use banana nut flavoring if you don't want to. I've made it in about every flavor you can think of. So go get your ingredients, get you a bucket, and make you some carp bait that'll last all year. Cause it's awesome. Hey guys, if you like this video, click that like button. And if you're not subscribed, then what you waiting on? And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next build.